The XAI goes 50 million in units of H100 equivalent AI compute, but much better power efficiency online within five years. If it takes whatever, five minutes to install, five minutes times 50 million. Jeez. That's a lot. Like how many hours is that? This is wild, man. Anybody else made that claim and I wouldn't buy it for a second, but the fact that Elon is saying it, he really might get there. That's crazy. Five minutes times 50 million is 475 years. <laughs> so they're gonna have to scale it. They're probably gonna assemble them all flat and just bring the whole box. But like, still somebody has to do it. I'm just yeah. saying like, you're gonna have to throw so many people at this problem. Or if he thinks within five years you'd be able to have robots assemble them, 50 million is yeah. a lot. It does not matter what object you are talking about. 50 million grains of sand is a lot. Just to benchmark it, Wild. OpenAI is saying they will have over 1 million GPUs by the end of 2025. So that's a wow. 50x multiple. Well, okay. But already a million in 2025, that's huge. So the super clusters that Grok 4 is rocking that allowed them to leapfrog everybody else is like 250,000 by 320,000 or something like that. So it's like that we're going to have uh, a million by the end of this year. Like, damn. 300% year over year growth with no signs of letting up. We just, we're not drinking in what that really means. Tennessee is starting to raise their hand about XAI's consumption and their like gas output because they have temporary turbines running right now and there's only supposed to be like 10 of them, but he's been running like 35 of them. Yeah. So there are environmental concerns. Is there something we should be concerned about because 50 million GPUs, that's yes. a nuclear power plant. There, like there is a thing you should be deathly afraid of. China winning the AI race. You can't stop. Game theoretics tell you, you cannot stop. Whatever you're worried about, sorry, this is the Manhattan Project. You can't play around. If the Nazis might develop nuclear, you have to beat them to it. You have to beat them to it. Did I mention you have to beat them to it? You are in that kind of race with AI. AI has the potential of being a winner-take-all technology. It probably won't be winner-take-all as long as you're roughly paralleling each other. Mm -hmm. But boy, oh boy, you can't stand still and you cannot slow yourself down. You just can't. And it is, this is the first model. I remember you were telling me this, that it's actually showing signs of like understanding like the physical world and, yes. and like reasoning and stuff like that. So now when you get to 50 million times that output, yeah. that's AGI, right? Like that's what we're talking about. If you get that big of a cluster and you can't achieve AGI, mm -hmm. then Yan LeCun is right and LLMs just won't yield that result. The distance that AI has already traveled is so crazy. And when you think about, okay, remember, you're not only gonna make these units bigger, you're going to make them more efficient. And so, so much of AI is about the algorithm and we're so early, oh my God. When I think about the video compression algorithms that we use now versus the ones that we used to use and what a big difference it makes, oh my God. Like it's, you're gonna get the same thing with AI, like far less GPUs to mm -hmm. get the same output, but you actually have these gigantic GPUs. So now you're just able to do that much more. And that's where this really gets extraordinary. If people have not experimented with OpenAI's agents do, they are incredible. Is there a, a limit though? Cause there is something to the Manhattan project of it all. Is there a limit to what we ought to do yeah. or? Yes, what we, what we ought to do. It's, there are, of course, limits to what you yeah. ought to do. You shouldn't be programming something that you know will enslave humanity, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be um, reckless about security. You should definitely be taking steps to make sure that these things are aligned. You should be going way out of your way to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. But what you shouldn't be doing is putting a regulatory burden on this that makes it impossible mm -hmm. to build. You shouldn't be saying, oh, we're worried about emissions. It's like, hold on, you've got a way bigger fish to fry right now. Do the cleanest energy you can, but don't stall this stuff out. What people always lose sight of is there are regulations that stop it, and then there are regulations that give a clear framework that people can work within. So for instance, if we don't wanna see all the gas and coal being used, great, then make it possible for them to spin up nuclear energy, hydro energy, whatever else we're going to let them use, but don't just shackle them and say like, you can't use that at all. Yeah. You've gotta put them on a path where they can leverage that now but be incentivized to move towards something cleaner. AI will cement classes of wealth. I'm really like focused AI on AI will word cement, cement classes of wealth? Cement classes of wealth. No, it won't. As we'll do the like exact opposite. Rich people will have access False. to it and then it falls away. What's the counter argument to that? The reality is every technology ever, ever starts with the rich have access to it because they can afford it. And then it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because humans are selfish. 
They are selfish. And so they want to be like, I want to be the one to bring this to the masses. I want to make this thing cheaper so that more people use mine. I don't want that guy to have it. I want them to use my thing. It always happens, okay? First, the railroads made a very small number of people extremely wealthy, and then it completely turned America into a superpower because we had this vast space with all these different resources and we could ship it around really fast. People need to, again, look at history. These patterns repeat all the time. You can always trust humans to be selfish. And the most selfish thing people can do is make technology more available to more people. They wanna hoard the money, possibly. They wanna hoard the assets. Again, that's not how the system works, but people try to do it. So they're always trying to get richer and richer and richer and make more money. But what do they end up actually doing? They make life better for everybody because the only way to get money is to make it available to everybody. I feel like Daniel Presley said something about that, where he was like, this is gonna far benefit the rich first, and then once they get cemented, then they're gonna disseminate the information down. Oh God, people I should have to run a company, Drew. People should have to run a company, and they are suddenly gonna go, oh wait, you've gotta spend dollars sequentially, you gotta invest in one thing, it has to yield a return, otherwise you can't invest in this other thing. People just literally, they literally think, that buildings just appear out of nowhere, companies kick out products just automatically. Mm -hmm. And I think because so few people understand what they do on a daily basis, how it actually impacts the company, that they're like, they just think work is the thing that you have to do because you have to make money, but it doesn't actually do anything in the real world. Instead of understanding, uh, we make all this wealth, we make all these material things that make our lives better because people have an innovative idea and they work really hard to create an engine that outputs something that's more valuable than its inputs. And that is very difficult. There are two really hard things that any great entrepreneur has to do. You have to attract and retain talent and you have to allocate capital wisely. And if you can't do those, and most people just do not understand money, they don't understand capital allocation, they don't understand how you have to sequence things, they don't understand the importance of profits, they just don't understand it. Ooh, this super chat is a banger. Let's Ooh. go. In the age of AI, Kissinger warns, the future won't make things cheaper, it'll split society in two, those who wield AI and those ruled by it. The cost isn't dollars, it's your agency. That reminds me a lot of Einstein's dreams. Yeah. They have their finger on a very important thing. So if you know who Emad Mostak is, this is why he is just fiendish about making sure that AI does not get trapped behind paywalls. This is why Elon Musk originally wanted OpenAI to actually be open and available to everybody. This is why Elon Musk, every time one of their new models comes out, they release the previous one and make it open and available. People are going to make AI open and available. You do not have to panic. It won't be the bleeding edge one. That just is what it is because they do need to make money to convince all of you to work. That's the hard truth. None of us will work for free. We're the problem. Wrap your head around that. Even money off the table, it's affordable to everybody. It's achievable, obtainable for everybody. Yep. There are people who still, in 2025 of July, reject AI. I was talking to a buddy of mine. He yeah. was talking about how he has like this idea. It's a super good YouTube idea. I don't want to ruin it. But it's so good about just how like kitchens aren't made how you think they're made. He's like, yeah, but that takes so much data and I'll just have to aggregate all this information. And I was like, yeah, why don't you just use AI? You can kind of like separate, like you can organize all your thoughts so that way you can kind of take it chunk by chunk. And he's like, nah, I'm a tactile person. I'd much rather have a pen and pencil. And like he took pride in that. And it's almost like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to use AI. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. And it's kind of like the people that are like, I don't want a car. I want to ride a horse. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But then you're going to go not go twice as far. And I'm worried that with the rapid adoption of technology, those people are going to be left behind. And it's not even a rich, poor thing. It's a, you think you don't need it versus this is actually a tool that you're not utilizing the right way. I, you can't help people that don't want to be helped. And I think that there are going to be people that are, for religious reasons, they will completely reject AI. They will completely reject technology. The Amish already do it. There's going to be more people. Yep. And I'm sure a lot of them live wonderful lives. They just will have no political influence, whatever. They will have to basically do like the Amish do. And you create a community and you can cycle within your own community. It is what it is. 
So uh, people should have the right to choose that life if they want, and some will, and some of them will maybe be even happier. I think there are some crazy stats in the Amish, and they're actually pretty happy. When you're choosing that life by choice, that's awesome. People should be able to choose the life they want. Should I still continue college if everything will change so much? Question mark. I wouldn't. Not if you have to take on debt. If I had kids right now, I would say under no circumstances should you go to college if you're going to take on debt unless... The job that you're going to get on the other side of that is going to be like three to five X more lucrative in the first five years so that you can begin paying it off like easily so that you're not stressing out about it. The AI productivity is going to be deflationary, which will make anyone in debt in one uh, chat. And then don't say the it. trillions of debt owed um, don't by say the it. U.S. will fuck us hard. As don't say it. Uh, <sighs> okay, PSA. There are two types of deflation. One is terrifying and one is awesome the terrifying one is crisis led deflation crisis led deflation is all bad all the time innovation led deflation is all around you and is amazing by the way it's happening right now it's just that the government consumes it all rather than letting you take advantage of it. The reason people are worried about deflation is they it does do what you're talking about, which is whatever debt you have, that debt is going to effectively slowly go up in value. It is going to require people to change their strategy. Trust me when I say, uh, unfortunately, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. And remember, if you've got economic growth that outpaces that, then you can go in and you can pay off that debt, which is exactly what certainly the government will be incentivized to do, and individuals would be wise to follow the same. But as the economy is growing, as long as a meaningful percentage of that is getting to the people actually working in the system, you're gonna be fine. And people will be wise to pay off their debt because they realize they're in a deflationary environment, but hey, no problem, because the economy is growing so much from everything that's happening. Because remember, it's not just that the cost of the things is going down, it's that there's more things coming onto the market. You have you have just literally an embarrassment of riches. There's so many amazing things out there. This is why they're getting cheaper over time. You want to be in that position. It will change the economy. It will force people to change their behavior, but it is not going to be a crisis. It is not people hoarding their money because they're in fear. Everything feels great. It feels like the roaring 20s. Velocity of money comes from the way that people feel. They feel good. Remember, this is all a confidence game. In a world where we have AI-led deflation because things are basically becoming free. Energy costs are falling out of the sky. Labor costs are falling out of the sky. We can get virtually anything we want for free. Your problem becomes not deflation. Your problem becomes meaning and purpose. And by the way, if everybody's getting everything for free, is anybody going to worry that some, like, even if we had to say, all right, listen, guys, deflation is causing a problem with the debt, so we're just going to wipe out the debt. And everybody's like, well, I live like a king. I can literally get a car built 3D printed or you know put together by a robot in an afternoon for 9.95 like it it's just a totally different game so you don't want to imagine like all the bad things that will come from how amazing this is but not realize it will be offset by the fact it's so fucking amazing that prices are falling okay there is a difference between crisis led deflation and innovation led deflation when has innovation ever led to actual deflation Price go down is not deflation. Price of TV go down is not deflation. When prices go down, they sell you on the next thing or the upgrade. Planned obsolescence is real. That is true for the people that are buying the latest and greatest, but for the people who can now get a TV for $200, like that's unbelievable. When a TV used to cost, I mean, $2,000. Yeah, the equivalent of, right, in inflation adjusted dollars. When you compare that, people now have cheaper options that are so much cheaper than the cheapest option when that technology first came on. We're so surrounded by deflation that we don't even think about it. So sure, the person that can afford the latest and greatest will buy the latest and greatest, but the person that can't now has access to something that kings would have killed for a long time ago. This is the hedonic adaptation. People do not realize how people that are poor live better than somebody who was wealthy 4,000 years ago they don't even have access to refrigeration like bro you can be homeless and live on the street 
and get access to somebody giving you a couple bucks and you go buy something out of a refrigerator in a grocery store. So you may not own the refrigerator, but you still have access to refrigerated food. The frame of reference that they have is distorted compared to what's actually yeah, there. Poor people in America live better than the three million people below that make less than a dollar a day in the world. So it's like, we're all on a scale to ground us. Ain't that the truth, Drew. Yep. Ain't that the truth.